Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar on uh, refugee upskilling with mobile, WhatsApp, and learning upgrade. I see a pretty big crowd here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, big thanks to Coabe for hosting this event. We want to share a new approach today to deliver life changing learning to your refugee and immigrant clients. Um, we're trying to help them reach their goals faster and help you scale up so you can serve a lot more people than you do now. Um, my name is Vinod Lobo. I am the founder and CEO of Learning Upgrade, and I'm joined by Drew Robinson, our Director of Partnerships. So Drew's going to get us started today. All right, thanks, Vinod. Um, so before I get into the presentation, just wanted to go over a quick outline of what we'll be covering. And so Vinod got started, but I'll be giving a brief introduction on Learning Upgrade for those of you that aren't familiar with us, have never heard of us, or maybe have uh, you know been introduced to us for some of our work with um, you know HSE, uh, ESL, uh, digital literacy, and other uh, you know programs that we help. Um, but today it's going to be a focus on our uh, you know really our last you know two years of work, which has really been empowering refugees. Um, and making sure that uh, we can improve their self-reliance, but also optimize their success for those of you that are in more traditional um, education provider pathways. Um, we'll be you know, really focusing on some case studies. And so some of those will be our local programs. Uh, one of them is UMI Learning Center. Another is from the Somali Bantu Association. And then we'll also be highlighting our work with a large um, NGO. Uh, recently we started, this was last year, um, with an, an initial group of about 800 refugees, um, and that's quickly grown to a few thousand now. I think we're at 4,500, and we're onboarding, um, you know, a few hundred refugees every couple of weeks through their program. So we'll be talking about how they're using Learning Upgrade, but more importantly, how Learning Upgrade has really um, helped those learners improve their English, math, and job skills. We'll be talking about the app you know, which courses the students are using, how they're getting onboarded, and how best to optimize this for refugees. And then really the important one is going to be deployment models. You know, how are we doing this with refugees at the local level, at the international, um, for remote deployments? And so we'll talk about how to best optimize our learning management system and the student onboarding to ensure that every refugee is able to get off uh, to a fast start with Learning Upgrade. And then also make sure that they have uh, you know, their pre-test taken care of, they're enrolled in the appropriate courses, and then they can go through um, and improve their English, math, and job skills. And then at the end, we'll just be briefly covering you know, that everybody here that hasn't used Learning Upgrade in the past um, can get started with a free pilot. We'll be sharing a link in the chat for that. Um, and so we'll be putting that out you know, a few times throughout the presentation. Um, so if you don't see it right now, you, know, you can also circle back at the end. Um, but again, anybody that hasn't used Learning Upgrade in the past, you can get started with a Learning Upgrade pilot today. Um, just fill out the pilot form. Uh, we'd be more than happy to get you started. Our pilots do include free training. Um, so if you, you know, take in the presentation today and you have some customization for deployment that you think you'll need, um, that's fantastic. Just let us know after you fill out the pilot form and then we can put together a presentation to make sure that all of your questions are answered and then we can have that deployment and onboarding for your learners customized to meet your needs. Um, we will be processing the pilots. I'm also joined, um, so we have a distributor in adult education. So for any of you um, that uh, you know, have purchased any text or print materials from New Readers Press, um, you can also get your pilot through New Readers Press. I have Greg Stoltz um, who's joining today. And so he's gonna be helping answer some questions and then also fulfilling some of those pilots and training requests. Okay, um, the last thing I'll cover as far as the getting started is, you know, if you do have questions um, here in Zoom, there's the Q&A and then there's also the chat. So it's fantastic that so many of you have entered, uh, you know, your introductions in the chat. For any of you that haven't, you know, we'd be very interested to hear, you know, what capacity you're working with refugees. Uh, are you an admin? Are you a teacher? Are you a coach? Are you a tutor? Um, feel free to use the chat to introduce yourself. And then also in that introduction, you know, if you could provide your name, uh, maybe, you know, which organization you're affiliated with or which region you're working in. And then, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, capacity you're, you're serving uh, refugee learners. 
Um, now that's interesting for us. And then we can kind of help target this presentation. Um, but also if you'd like to have a conversation afterward, we'd be more than happy to do that. If you have any questions uh, in the presentation about learning upgrade or about the deployment that we didn't cover, feel free to use the Q&A. Um, we'll be answering that throughout the presentation, but then we can also circle back and answer questions at the end. So now I'll get into the introduction on learning upgrade. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar, you know, our entire mission is, you know, how can we help organizations and education providers deliver life-changing education to learners that aren't currently receiving that, um, or students that could just use some uh, additional education pathways. So our goal is to empower NGOs, community colleges, um, adult schools, libraries, literacy centers um, with our English, math, and test prep. So learning upgrade in a nutshell, again, we're all about that life-changing education, but how do we do that? You know, so the number one way we do that and what most people know us for is our breakthrough app. And what we do with our app is we provide learners with an assessment. They're gonna get enrolled in our English, math, or job skills courses. And then they're gonna be able to binge learn with our engaging content. And that's gonna optimize their learning and it's gonna help them advance at four times the learning speed of traditional education. So that's the app that we have for your students. For the teachers, we have an industry leading LMS that's gonna allow you to track and monitor all student growth. It's also gonna help you expand your reach for learners. And so for a lot of our traditional education, you know, teachers tend to max out at about a 30 to one um, ratio for in-class. And it's really difficult to scale to reach large groups of refugees if you have hundreds or thousands coming um, to your program or to your state or to your county, you know, what we want to do is make sure that we can reach everybody. And so we'll be talking about how you can use our LMS to onboard large groups of learners. And then also, you know, if you're a, you know, an instructor that would like some help um, and you're relying on credentialed teachers to do that, you know, how learning upgrade is going to allow you to rely on volunteers with no education background to help facilitate that learning. And then we have that free pilot. It's free to start, very affordable to grow. And so those are the three pieces that make up Learning Upgrade that we'll be talking about today. So, you know, our little resume for the company here, you know, we've served over 3 million learners. Many of you through COID have probably heard of us through the Adult Literacy X Prize, which was a few years ago. Um, we had a few webinars on that. And that was a global competition to see if an app could have measurable gains in adult education. They used the CASAS test um, as the test for that one. It was the largest field test ever in adult ed, 12,000 learners. And at the end of that multi-year competition, we were the grand prize winners. Um, it's a global solution now. So, you know, in the time of the X Prize, it was, you know, in the United States and our presence in adult education um, was growing. And since then we've expanded and we're now working in multiple countries. Um, you know, we meet all the federal standards, and so that's really, you know, when we talk about apps, there's a lot of language acquisition apps, um, things like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, Babbel, which are great for learning phrases and, you know, acquiring basic English, you know, but what we really want to ensure is that students have the federal standards, a standards-based program that's going to help them advance in an academic setting so that they can continue to uh, progress in their career and then, of course, eventually optimize their chance for the best jobs and highest earnings later on. And so learning and upgrade is a standards-based program. We also have uh, a new feature. So for those of you that maybe haven't attended a webinar, you know, in, in a year or more with learning upgrade, um, we've completely redone our LMS. And so now we support text message, WhatsApp, and email onboarding. So again, this is going to really help you get your students up and running, especially for our refugees. We find that, you know, about as close to 100% as you can get are using WhatsApp as their primary communication platform. And so we meet them there. And so we're gonna send out all their onboarding there localized. And so we can meet them in their first language, uh, communicate what learning upgrade is in their first language, have them log into the app using a guide in their first language. And then once they get into learning upgrade, then we'll have that full immersion into English. Um, but up until then, we're gonna meet them on WhatsApp in their first language. And that's really gonna help you as an instructor if you don't have translators in the classroom or translators that you can work with in real time, um, we'll be able to get all of that documentation into your learner's hands for you. The other big one is that we don't have any fragmentation. You know, So a lot of programs, they're gonna focus on English, they'll just do math. And so you can only provide certain courses to certain students. 
but since we cover English, math, and job skills, with one app, you're going to provide your learners with a pathway um, from basic, new arrival to the country, all the way up to high school equivalency and job placement. So before we get into the app, you know, I like to talk, you know, anecdotes and stories about usage. You know, how does it work? You know, what has it done for learners? So we'll start out at the individual level and then start to get into some, some schools, some groups, and then the larger picture for an entire NGO. Um, but Sudio is an individual. She came to the United States as a refugee and joined UMI Learning Center, uh, which is a refugee organization in San Diego. And what she wanted to do when she came to the program is, you know, first and foremost, have that place for community, um, you know, language familiarity, a place for her kids to go after school. Um, but in the education sense, she really wanted to acquire some English and math so that she could assist her seven children who are now in schools in the States. And so they were having some difficulty with their English and their math. And she was struggling personally because she really wanted to help them, but couldn't. And so with the education they were providing at UMI Learning Center, um, they were having difficulty because a lot of the education providers or credentialed providers, um, you know, they hadn't worked uh, exclusively with ESL. And then they were also having a really difficult time scaling. And so, you know, how do we meet the needs of a large group of learners that come in? So they got started with Learning Upgrade. You know, we enrolled every single learner at the site and they made, you know, just incredible gains over the course of a short period of time. In their first three or four months, the students were averaging 15 to 20 hours per learner um, just in that first quarter. Um, but Sudio was an exceptional case because what she was able to do is actually go through almost every single Learning Upgrade lesson, every single course. We have 24 courses. Each course has 60 lessons. And each one of those courses is gonna take 20 to 30 hours to complete. Um, but she was highly motivated, uh, went through almost every single one. And she was able to accomplish what would have taken five plus years in adult ed. And that's, she was able to go from basic in English and math. So a very beginning pre-literate student, uh, first exposure to mathematics in a lot of um, the content areas and is now taking credit bearing courses at a local uh, community college in San Diego. Um, so just think about how much time that would have taken in a classroom. And yes, it is doable, um, but there's cultural sensitivities that we have to work with. Um, there's also equity issues. And so, you know, does my learner have access to a car? Um, are they able to take time out in the middle of the day to actually drive to classes when they have young children in the household? If they have a car, can they afford gas, especially with gas prices the way they are right now? scheduling conflicts of other kinds, picking kids up from schools, appointments, things like that. And so Learning Upgrade being a smartphone app that uh, hits every single federal standard is going to allow every single learner access to this pathway from beginner um, to advanced. So now we're going to hear uh, from an instructor at UMI Learning Center, as well as another student there. Hello, my name is Shadia Mahmoud. I teach ESL here um, at UMI Learning Center. What's very amazing about this program is it really helps them love to learn. It just makes it fun and just more enjoyable. I think it's a great addition to, to add into our program. We have seen tremendous improvements um, they started from basically doing the alphabets to now where they're reading paragraphs and um, reading sentence and completed sentence. So that's pretty um, amazing. Hi, my name is Sabiba Jama. I'm here at UMI Learning Center and I increase a lot of uh, learning things in Learning Upgrade. Somehow, learning upgrade is the best thing that I should recommend for the people, for the moms outside. And I will recommend people that they should go and it's just like easy things to do and you can do whenever you have a free time. And you can do like when you are in the hospital waiting the doctor, or you can do when you are waiting the cashier at this Walmart or anywhere you are. Or if you're washing a clothes at the laundry, you can do it whenever you have a free time. It's easy and it's understandable. And somehow it will tell you all the vocabularies and something like new words that you don't understand and the word that you can't even pronounce. It will help you to pronounce and it will help you to spell right. 
and it's good i like running upgrade and i also do every single day even like five minutes i like to do it before i used to play video game but now my video game is learning upgrade and i can read right now and before i wasn't understanding the new words and pronunciation but whenever it pronounced me i like it and also i was weak with math one plus one is kindergarten can do it but i wasn't doing it right now i can do up to 10. so that helped me a lot i like it and i should recommend a lot people for it. so that's why i like it and i am in math right now it's course two which is i finished course one i get silver certificate which i'm proud of myself <laughs> and also i did english which is and now i'm doing in english too which i finished it i have one bronze certificate and i am so proud of myself i should recommend a lot all right so there you got to hear from uh, one of the instructors at umi learning center as well as one of the students and now we'll take a look at um, an ngo that we're working with and so this is focus humanitarian assistance uh, and their primary uh, education goal is just working with Afghan refugees. And so when they first reached out to us about a year ago, um, their primary focus was how do they scale remotely? And so traditionally, they had been able to place educators uh, with refugees that were located in different countries around the world. Um, for this first group, it was in Turkey. So these are Afghan refugees that were in and around Istanbul and a few other locations. Um, and now they were, you know, because of COVID, being forced to move all of their education online. And so scale was a massive challenge for them because they were trying to find educators, credentialed educators that could meet from Canada where they're located um, with these refugees and turkeys. And they were only able to scale up to about one to five, in some cases, one to 10, um, because of the need for translators. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, educators that they had were not Dari speaking educators. And so then if you have one credentialed educator, then you would need a Dari translator for each one and then get things scheduled um, given the time gap. And it was a real challenge. So they reached out to us and said, hey, you know, we need to find a program that can still meet all the federal standards. That's number one. Number two, we needed to scale. You know, we have thousands of learners that we would like to reach, um, that we need to reach. And right now the program that we have isn't doing it. Um, so can learning upgrade help? And so we said, yeah, you know, absolutely. This is what we've been doing, you know, here in the United States for, for two decades now. And so, you know, let's put together a plan and make sure we meet the needs of all of these learners. Um, but let's start small. And so what they did is, you know, they sent out, uh, we translated our onboarding and we translated a video, an intro video for learning upgrade into Dari. They sent it out via a WhatsApp group chat. And our goal was, you know, let's get 50 to 100 refugees, and that'll be a pretty good pilot size to move forward with after. Um, long story short, there was so much of a buy-in at the beginning that our initial pilot ended up turning into a few hundred learners at the start. They talked about it with their friends, with their family, and then we had an 800 student pilot to begin, um, which is a, a very large group, but they had tasked us with, you know, finding a program that would help them scale. And right off the bat, within a month, we were like, all right, well, you know, we can do it. We have 800. Um, and so that was the, the beginnings there. In the first six months, you know, we ended up going from that initial pilot up to 2,000 students. Um, those students finished 348,000 lessons, 44,000 hours, and 12,000 certificates. And that 12,000 certificates, that's really the most important. And so a learning upgrade course, one of our 60 lesson courses, is going to cover a full grade level of academic content. And so for you know those 2000 learners to finish 12,000 certificates, um, it's, it's hugely important for confidence. As you heard Habiba Jama mentioned in the video before, when she received that bronze in English and that silver in math, um, just the confidence and the ability to have that certificate that says I've you know mastered this grade level of academic content, but more importantly for the education provider to be able to show that their learners are making progress to be able to show which content areas they're doing well in, which subject areas they might need a little more assistance with. Um, but these certificates are huge, especially for these groups. One of the other things that came out of this is what we were able to do to help them scale even more 
is all of the learners that were considered high flyers. And so that's gonna be a student that got up to our English upgrade four or five, which is an NRS level four or five. They then became the next group of tutors and coaches. And so what we did in the first one is we recruited volunteers in Canada. And so one volunteer was paired with 50 to 100 Afghan refugees. And now for the follow-up deployments that we're still doing now, the high flyers from that initial pilot group are becoming the mentors for the next group of refugees. And that's been fantastic because we no longer you know, need to think about um, translators because the Dari speaking refugees are able to communicate with the next group of refugees. But more imper uh, importantly, it's that personal story. You know, they are exactly where these other individuals are, you know, recently displaced or displaced in the past, um, families in similar situations. And so the WhatsApp group chats have been a fantastic way for these learners um, to motivate, communicate, and then also celebrate as every single learner starts making this path to full proficiency. And the big one with this group is not just, you know, the anecdotal stories of uh, learner confidence and improvement in life, but, you know, it's that dramatic growth um, for their standard, which is SEFR. So for those that aren't familiar with SEFR, um, it's the common European framework um, that matches up almost identical to what we use here in the States. And so we have our NRS levels, our CASAS levels. Uh, and so I have those there on the right for a general alignment. Um, but if you're looking at the NRS ESL levels, you know, a one, so that's a pre-literate learner, um, a new arrival, that's what almost all of our refugee cohort was. So when we had this initial group of refugees, you'll see in our pretest, um, we were looking at that pre-A1, which is the NRS ESL level one uh, is 92%. So almost every single one, you know, this is their first exposure to English. Um, in every case, you know, their first exposure to English in an academic setting. You know, many have exposure through entertainment, whether it be music or television. Um, you know, they'll acquire a few words here and there. Um, but in an academic sense, this is their first exposure to English. So all preliterate refugees. And we have a very small group of learners that tested higher than that. So after six months, you know, we had these learners go through learning upgrade. Um, they started out with our pretest. And so with the pretest, the app is gonna assess the learner the very first time they log into the app. And then they're gonna get assigned in our learning upgrade English track. So for the vast majority, again, 92%, they were here with English basics. And so that's the very basics, you know, just learning um, the alphabet and scaling up from there. And then a few go through into these other courses. As I mentioned earlier, each one of these courses is gonna be 20 to 30 hours to complete, 60 full lessons. And so you can see, you know, the amount of time on task that learners have plugged in here. Um, you know, we use songs, video, and games to teach. You know, it help, helps drive the engagement through binge learning. Um, and you can see after six months, you know, how different this group looks. You know, that preliterate group went from 92% all the way down to 16%. But most importantly, the independent and proficient learners are almost half now. And so these are learners that are going to be up um, independent here on the NRS ESL for that five and six. Um, but also you can see for our CASAS correlation, they're up uh, above that preliterate of 210. And so that was one of the key benchmarks for us as well in the X Prize. You know, when we won the Adult Literacy X Prize um, in that field test for 12,000 learners, their goal was, you know, in the pretest is you had to be under 210. So the preliterate benchmark was 210 or below. They enrolled them in learning upgrade. And then after the, that 12,000 learner field test, we were the grand prize winner. And so interesting enough, even for SEFR and other standards internationally, it tends to break out the same. You know, when we have those two tenor below, you know, where very few programs work, you know, many of the programs out there, you know, they focus really on getting the learners from this English four, English five, you know, up to high school equivalency. A lot of programs can do that. But the reason we have so many programs, especially with refugees, migrants, new arrivals coming to us, there are very few programs that are gonna work for learners here at the bottom. And so these learners that are 210, 200 below on CASAS, and then these basic, you know, preliterate individuals. And so that's really the power is it doesn't matter where a learner starts their learning journey. It can be anywhere in this strand based on the pretest. We're gonna be able to give them that path that moves them up to full proficiency and again, you know, this isn't uh, handpicked data with a group of 10 or 15 learners. You know, this is a group of 800 refugees uh, that were, you know, based in Turkey. So a completely remote deployment um, that have radically changed their lives. And now we're working in India. 
refugees in Greece, Syria. We're even working directly um, with individuals still in Afghanistan. And then we're reaching out to some of the GCC countries now. We started in UAE, and then we're gonna be going to a few other countries um, in the uh, GCC. So what is this app? You know, we've talked about, you know, some of the anecdotal stories with the individuals like Studio, heard from the teachers, you know, see how it works with groups as large as, you know, 800 to start and up into the thousands for the refugees. Um, so what does this app actually look like for the learners? So the learning upgrade app, you know, looks like you see on the bottom left here in the image. And so we actually show all the courses to the learners after their pretest. They're gonna take the pretest and then they're gonna get enrolled in one of our English courses. If they take the math pretest, they'll see that there. And it's really important that they see all the courses here psychologically for content buy-in. Um, just like Netflix, if somebody recommends a show to you and you see that there's only one season, the likelihood you're gonna start that pilot and spend any time on it's pretty low. You know, you don't wanna pick up a show that got canceled after the first season, you know, cliffhangers, loose edges, all kinds of things. And learning's the same way. You know, if we give a learner something that's fantastic for that beginner, um, emerging reader, that's fantastic. But if it can't actually get them to where they need to go, you know, the buy-in's not gonna be there. And so here, what we're gonna give them is it doesn't matter where they're getting in on the pretest. It might be basic one or two. They see that if they stick with it, they'll get all the way up through five. The same thing with algebra. It doesn't matter where you're beginning, you can get all the way up to mastery in algebra. And then after you've done those courses, now you can focus on the test prep and the job skills. So you can improve your digital literacy, work life skills, financial literacy, citizenship for those in the States, and then those high school equivalencies for GED and HiSET. And then for those that need the language proficiency, they can take our TOEFL and IELTS test prep. So all of these courses are 60 lessons. And for each one of those lessons, it starts out with instruction, bite-sized instruction, and then they're gonna have practice questions. And all of the practice questions come with, you know, thousands of pieces of recorded audio. And the reason for that is every single one of the practice questions they work on provides built-in feedback and remediation. So one major challenge for remote deployments, when you have refugees working at home, a workbook just doesn't cut it. You know, if they get an answer incorrect, they have to go to the back of the book and they might get the correct answer, but there's no real-time feedback for the learner to make sure that they understand what it is they did incorrectly. With Learning Upgrade, if they do answer something incorrect, the voice comes on, the narrator walks them through it. They get images, graphs, lines, hands and arrows are gonna point to really make sure that it's dialed in for them. Then we're gonna scale it back and give them a little bit of an easier question and they can continue to advance and improve um, at their own pace. It's gonna be an individualized app just for their experience to make sure that they're moving forward at the pace that's appropriate for them. It's available anywhere. So we use this term, the Learning Upgrade app, just because the majority of our refugees are using it on Android phones. It is available on iOS as well uh, through the App Store and on the web. So for those of you that have learners actually coming into a physical center, as you saw in that video at the beginning, uh, it can work on a Chromebook, laptop, desktop. And then as you also saw, most of those Android phones were lower end. So we make sure to purchase a lot of the lower end smartphones to ensure that every single learner, every single refugee has the same access to learning upgrade as those of us um, with the newer iPhones. And so even if your learners have, you know, some of the prepaid phones, the key is just that it's, you know, an Android or an iOS phone, and that it's running a relatively recent version of the operating system. So we go a few years back for Android um, and the same for iOS. It is standards based, um, so I won't get too much into the standards, but you know, we do meet all the federal standards and have alignments for those. So for those of you that are interested in every single lesson that we cover, we have PDFs. You can just go to learningupgrade.com. Um, in the main menu, you'll see where it says courses. And then on that courses page, and we can share a link to that courses page in the chat as well. You can get full lesson lists. Um, you can see our alignments for college and career readiness, Common Core, CEFR for that call, uh, Common European Framework, um, also CASAS, so you can see all the CASAS alignments, but really where most of our teachers, um, admins, coordinators spend their time is just on this straightforward placement table. And the placement table is just gonna give you their current or goal uh, for table 11, 12, CASAS, NRS. And then you can see how it aligns to the learning upgrade course. 
And that's important, especially after that pretest. They take a placement, they get enrolled in English up grade three. Well, what does that mean? You know, most of the time when you're working with a refugee, they haven't already taken a placement uh, for your program or for your um, education center. And so it's nice to get an understanding of where they are um, on these tests without actually having them sit for a test. And then the big one is, you know, how do we get that accelerated growth? Well, obviously we're meeting your learner, you know, when and where it fits into their schedule. So for a lot of them, you know, it's gonna be from 10 at night to three in the morning, early, you know, when their kids are at school. And what we're able to do is with the high engagement. Um, so I talked a little bit about the format, you know, on that content buy-in and showing them all the courses. Um, but it's also important to understand how our learners are spending most of their time on smartphones and just in life in general. You know, it's not reading, you know, 300 page PDFs. Uh, most of us aren't even doing that anymore. It's really based around bite-sized consumption. And so just think about all of your interactions on social media and entertainment. You know, as time goes on, things keep getting shorter and shorter. And so that's no different for our refugees and for our learners. You know, when they're going on WhatsApp and communicating with friends, maybe sharing memes or text messages, everything's getting shorter. If they're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or any other social media, it's really based around bite-sized consumption. And so our lessons meet them somewhere in the middle. You know, they're not 10 second lessons, but all of our lessons are in that three to five minute window. We use animations, we use songs from different genres. We have lots of fun elements in those lessons to you know, grab their attention, keep their attention, you know, keep them wanting to log in time and time again to get the instruction. And then after we have the instruction, then they're gonna have the bite-sized lessons, again, with the built-in feedback and remediation. It's also gamified, and so they have to earn points for every one of those 60 lessons. And of course, they need 100 points in order to move on to the next one, but it has to be done at 75% or better. Um, that's gonna be what a bronze is on the lesson. And then a 90 is gonna be a silver and 95 is gold. And then once they've completed all 60 lessons, that's when they earn those certificates that you heard Habiba talking about when she earned the bronze and the silver certificates. So once they get, you know, 75, 90 or 95 for all lessons in a course, that's when they'll earn the certificate. One through 59 are going to be the content. Those are untimed. Learners work at their own pace. Lesson 60 for each one of the courses is what we call the final challenge. And so that's going to be a cumulative test of everything they've learned on the entire course, and that one will be timed. So as they work through, again, in that high engaging, bite-sized lesson, uh, gamified, that's what's going to drive that binge learning. Uh, learners are going to be logging in, and that's really where we're seeing so much of that accelerated growth for our refugees around the world. And so here's just a brief look at what some of that engagement looks like. Um, at the bottom left, this is going to be for digital literacy, learning about documents, so a Word doc or for Google Docs, just getting familiar, you know, with the ribbons, some of the tools you can use, um, you know, when to use a document. And so this is fantastic for our learners that have already gone up through our English and at our NRS level four or five, uh, you know, have the language, uh, English language skills required to understand some of the more complex stuff we're going over in digital literacy. Um, you see our math, you know, these are Topics that can be a little bit difficult to teach in a workbook when an instructor is not right there with the learner. Um, here we're able to teach them. The bottom right is going to be the practice questions. So here it's a volume of a rectangular prism. They can see the object. Um, we have our formula below. When we click go, when it's incorrect, you'll see the green turns to red. So visually, they instantly get this cue. Now we're going to show them the formula on the right. We're going to walk them through how to answer it correctly, and then we'll scale it back. And that's for every single one of our practice questions in every single lesson. The audio has been recorded, the images, the formulas, the arrows, um, every single one of those. Again, tens of thousands of pieces of audio that we record to make sure that that tutor or teacher is always there with your learners. So now we're going to hear a little bit um, from another refugee center, um, and this is the Somali Bantu Association and just to hear how it's changed the lives of some of the learners there. I run the Somali Bantu Association of America. We have over 12 computers right now. 
running and we get today a, a new donation coming for five computers to make it up to numbers for 40 uh, people to be available to use. With the learning upgrade program, it changes a lot. Now a lot of people getting airport work, some they're getting in Hilton work because of the program help them how to speak and how to talk and how to communicate and everything. They're doing cool programs here, um, learning uh, upgrade, where they learn math, English, science, uh, writing, and um, all like the cool um, projects for them to get prepared for high school diploma or GED. I come here every day and use uh, my software for the learning upgrade to improve my English level. My goal is I want to learn English, improve my English, that's why I can reach my goal to get a better job. And my future in San Diego is to get a more education and for my kids, for our kids and learning program and to enjoy this program and to buy a house and to stay with our kids and stay out of the trouble. What's happened here is that between the tutor, uh, Medina, and this lab full of computers, um, they've been able to make something, some magic happen, which is basically to get uh, uh, adults who basically cannot even uh, read a word of English to where uh, you have literate adults who are reading and writing and speaking. When we came here, it's a lot of change for us. Like we can, we have a freedom of driving. We never, I wasn't expecting myself that I'll be having a car and I will be running this big office and helping refugees. I wasn't expecting, it's just my uh, dream thoughts. But now, my dream come true. All right, so that was a story um, from the Somali Bantu Association to see how it works, even when it's just a computer lab that they have there and the learners are working through that way. Now I'm gonna have Vinod come on and talk to you about some of the accelerated growth you can see based on the time on task. And then also take a look at our full lesson path and how that's going to dramatically impact each one of your refugees' earning potential over their lifetime. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Um, one of the remarkable things we found out working with refugees now uh, in the U.S. and around the world is this concept of learning pace. When we used to work in adult ed with computer labs, we'd see maybe 30 minutes a week, right, of, of work. And what that meant is in a year, you could finish about one of our courses. So one NRS level a year in English or in math. So the big change we've seen now, um, especially with refugees using smartphones at home, binge learning between eight at night, and two in the morning, is that we're seeing one hour a week, two hours a week, and four hours a week. In fact, uh, we saw over four hours a week with the Afghan refugees in Turkey. This has really changed the game. And the re here's the reason why. Someone working two hours a week, which, is, which was average among all our refugee deployments, is actually finishing one course every three months. Now, if you say one course every three months, that's 4x learning. That means in a year, a student can actually move up four NRS levels. They can start on NRS one and then end up on NRS five. We saw this quite a bit with the refugees in terms of the Sefer levels. So basically binge learning, you know, getting your students to work at home on their smartphones, which typically happens late at night um, after the kids have gone to bed, is driving this new 4x and even 8x learning where you can literally have someone move up um, way more than you would expect normally. Um, part of it is that everything's now in their hands. That means it's all, it's all in their smartphone and they can do it whenever they want and they can make as much growth as they want. So it is a completely different um, pace than we've ever seen before. Now, this graph here is basically all of our courses. You know, this is everything we have. So we, we have the English, then we have 600 math lessons all the way from kindergarten to algebra. 
and we have GED reading, which covers the four sections of the GED, um, uh, not including math. And then we have GED math. So it includes social studies and uh, uh, science, reading and writing. And then finally, we have the job skills, digital literacy, work life skills, which is soft skills, and financial literacy. Um, what's really important about this graph is that we know especially given data from the US government, that income levels increase as you go up this path. In fact, uh, in the US, we actually have uh, data on, you know, this is 30,000, this is 60,000, this is 80,000. Um, what's very important is very often in adult ed, we have people working way down at the bottom on uh, basic literacy or basic ESL. And then we have another group that works on GED prep and another work group that works on job skills. The important part is now we have one program, one app that can literally take a student through the entire path. That's been unprecedented. How we can take a learner now, a refugee, and tell them, look, if you do this full sequence of courses, it's going to take you this many hours, you know, maybe 200, maybe 300 hours but it's all in your hands and if you do so many hours a week you'll be done in one year or you'll be done in eight months and you can get all the way through so this has really been a game changer one app to go all the way from you know non-literate all the way through uh ready for college ready for job training um ready for a more advanced job um so the key to this graph is that one app show a learner where they're going, where they're starting, and give them a goal. And uh, in that two to 300 hour range, they can make huge gains. All right, thanks, Vinod. And so that's a cover of, you know, you know, what is Learning Upgrade and the Learning Upgrade app. Now I'm just gonna briefly cover uh, our LMS. And so this won't be a deep dive. What we like to do is for those of you that are getting started with a pilot or a license, we'll uh, set a follow-up training and that's really where we go into the LMS. The LMS is where we're gonna take care of our student onboarding, some of the options there, and a lot of the detailed reporting um, that's you know, gonna be critical for tracking and monitoring uh, student and refugee growth as they move through our courses. Um, but again, today just be a brief overview so you can see some of the options that we have available. So first and foremost, it's built around roles. So I know we have a lot of different roles attending here. So at the top right image, this is gonna be what we call our teacher role. And this is gonna be that individual that interacts directly with the learners. So this can be a teacher, a volunteer, a coach, or a tutor. Very similar to Google Classroom, they'll have this tile-based interface where they create classes. And then in those classes, that's where the learners uh, will display. For our onboarding, you know, we have multiple options. So we have student self-enrollment. So that's where we're gonna generate a single code for the class. It is localized, and so I think we have seven languages right now uh, where learners can get that self-enrollment guide. It'll walk them through every step, starting out with this is how you download the app. These are the exact screens and buttons you press all the way through taking the placement test to beginning their progress. So uh, self-enrollment's number one option. The second option is probably our most popular right now, and that's gonna be through a direct upload. So if you have a spreadsheet with all of your student names and contact info, um, we have a template that you can copy your spreadsheet onto, and then you can just directly upload it to the LMS and we'll create accounts for all of those students. Now, the really cool thing about our LMS is once you've done that, given the contact information you've provided, you can push their login credentials to their preferred communication method. And so that's gonna be email, text message, or WhatsApp. Again, today we're focusing on refugees, 100% of our use case, they all use WhatsApp as their primary communication platform. The reason for that is Facebook, who owns WhatsApp, has made communication on WhatsApp free in almost every country. And so that's a great way for your refugees to get their onboarding. Um, and then on top of that, you know, what our programs do is create WhatsApp groups. So if you're a teacher, tutor, or coach, to mirror that class and learning upgrade, and that way we, you can send messages to everybody at once. They can share their progress with each other. And then once you get a, a few high flyers, you know, usually five or 10 students that really take off with learning upgrade, 
you'll find that they end up being the ones that help the other learners that are getting started late, or maybe you're having a little bit of difficulty um, getting started. We also have this fantastic reports tab. Put all your KPIs up front. They'll see license data, student activity data, things like that. We also have um, account hierarchies. So for those of you that are working at a higher level, at a state, at a county, maybe you're responsible for tracking you know, 10 different education providers. We do have the ability to set those up. We won't be covering that today. We can do that in a follow-up one-on-one. Um, but just to want, you know, let you know that those options are available um, and we do have as many hierarchical roles as you need in the LMS to track and monitor at different levels in the organization. As I mentioned, we do have that WhatsApp text message and email. And the cool thing is WhatsApp announced just last month, you know, for any of you that use WhatsApp group chat to, you know, communicate with your refugees, it's always been a little bit of a hassle. You know, it was never really optimized for that purpose with schools, libraries, um, you know, any kind of nonprofit that wants an organized way to communicate. And so WhatsApp has accepted that and said, hey, you know, we're going to come out with this new version called WhatsApp Communities. And so this is really going to help you. It's really going to help us um, because once this goes live, we'll really be able to mirror those groups that we have in the LMS and then communicate with those learners based on class groups in WhatsApp Communities. So what does it look like? You know, so number one, you know, we're going to train your volunteers, teachers, tutors. We use the word volunteer just because in most of our refugee settings, they are volunteers that are doing the direct interaction. But for those of you that are in a more traditional education provider role, you know, if you have teachers that are working directly, you know, just swap that in. So that starts out today. You know, today's the first training. But again, for those of you that are getting started with a pilot, we're going to get started with a training for you that's customized based on your needs. So just reach out to us in that pilot form, and it'll be either you know one of us at Learning Upgrade or our partners at New Readers Press um, that'll be conducting that initial training. In there, we're going to focus on okay, how do you get your learners onboarded, and then how do you communicate? You know, so some best practices. Then how do you log into the LMS? You know, what are the optimal reports to run to make sure that every student is logging in, getting started finding out who's placing where based on our assessment and then tracking their growth um, through full proficiency. And then of course, we wanna celebrate that student success as they start earning certificates and beginning their journey um, to you know, full English and math proficiency there. We do come with requirements. So for those of you that are saying, hey, you know, I'm an education provider. I would like to expand my reach. Maybe now I you know, serve 100 or 200 in my community, but I know there's a need for 10,000. They're not a part of my organization now, but I'd like to scale up. How do I do that? You know, that's what a lot of our programs do. And so there we're relying on volunteers. And so we can train your volunteers if you want to recruit those. We just recently started doing this with Lears. And so we're helping them get those volunteers up and running, trained so that they can reach out um, to a few hundred more members of their communities and get them those um, you know, math and English skills. And so you know, won't go into too much detail again here, but when you do a follow-up training with us, if this is a model that you would like to deploy, just let us know and we'd be more than happy to help you um, with that part of the journey. We'll be going into too much uh, you know, nitty gritty on the LMS, but just some basics. Um, you know, so some of the most popular things that we have is we have a student report card. When Vinod was showing those 24 courses and that whole path to proficiency, we want to make sure that you have some easily digestible ways to look at it. So the student report cards, number one, we're going to give you their current English level, their math level, and then we'll break it down by subject area score. So even if they've worked on, you know, you know, five of our math and three of our English, you can quickly look at those grade level scores and you can see, okay, fundamentals, comprehension, spelling, grammar, writing. For a lot of our refugees, new arrivals, you'll see they'll make progress pretty quickly on some of those. And then that listening and speaking component can be a little low. This one's exaggerated for the demo, but it just gives you an idea of the kind of insights you'll be able to get from the student report card. We also, as I mentioned, have all of our onboarding localized. And so that's going to be important for those of you um, that want to do remote deployments. Um, if you're doing a spreadsheet upload um, in the drop down there, we have the English, Arabic, Dari, Spanish and Urdu. And then we recently um, got started with uh, Ukrainian and Polish. If there's any languages that you'd like to see added here that we don't currently have, just let us know. It's about a month turnaround time for us to get things translated and uploaded to the LMS, but we'd be more than happy to meet your refugees' needs 
for any language um, that they speak. Then we also have our reports. And so again, that's you know gonna be the focus usually of the follow-up training that we do. Just kind of you know how to understand our dashboard here, our licensing. In the one below, you know, you'll be able to get a quick view of your learner progress. You can scroll in to see how much time they're spending on math, English, and total each and every day. And then when you go down below that, you'll see all of our other reports. And the most popular is the student progress report by date. You know, that's going to be the report that helps you see how each student's performing, hours played, current levels, how many they're doing on the gold, silver, and bronze. We have a report for certificates. So if you want to do those individually, or if you're responsible for a large group, you can do a batch print. The student growth report is going to give you that growth data from the report card, but for every single student at your site. So if you need to see how all the students at your site are doing on each one of these subject areas for English and math, um, these growth reports are going to be a fantastic way uh, for you to log in and see that. Another great thing about our LMS is it plays nicely with all of your existing system. Uh, we have one click export to PDF, Excel, and print. And so most of our sites will run the report they need, have the time parameters set exactly as they need, and then they can do an export to um, Excel, and then they can plug that into their existing um, student management systems. Um, so that's number one um, that a lot of our sites are using. Um, the second thing that I'll mention um, that's really popular here is that, again, for those of you that have those uh, different administrative needs, teachers can view the students that are a part of their classes. For those of you that are an, uh, you know, an organization admin, you can view the progress of all of your teachers and all of the students there. And then for those of you that are tracking and monitoring multiple sites, you can have an, an admin um, credential that allows you to see all of your sites down to the individual student data or we have reports that'll just give you aggregate data for each one of the sites so you can track and monitor progress um, across multiple education providers. And so it's a very flexible program. Um, again, when you're filling out that pilot form today, um, just make sure in that pilot information at the bottom, you let us know kind of what your needs are and then we can tailor our feedback. If you've already filled out the pilot form, don't worry, we'll be responding to you and you can let us know at that point. So again, it's free to start and just wanted to know to just give a, a brief uh, mention here on you know, what that looks like and why it's important and uh, you know, what you can accomplish with just one pilot. Yeah, because I've been getting uh, a lot of questions about uh, different, for, uh, different models and, and, and how you can get going. Um, the big thing about pilots is that some of you have blended learning, some of you are doing all remote, some of you are doing tutor based one on one after school, you know, there's so many different models out there. Um, we can help you, you know, during the training, we can talk to you about exactly how you do this. There was another question about, could this be used while people are waiting for a program, like if they signed up for something. And we do that a lot with libraries all across the country where they're waiting. They might have to wait three months, six months, and then they can, uh, they can sign up. Now, the pilots, uh, Jacqueline just asked, how long is it? The pilots are three months long from the time your students get started is three months. Um, if you look at 4X growth in three months, you could actually make one NRS gain as a student. So what's really important in a pilot is that you have good training, get your students on. We don't have a limit. You can start small, but then you can go big with a lot of students in the pilot. And then at the end of the pilot, you can look at the data. We have growth reports that show NRS growth. Um, and uh, you can actually compare students and see how many NRS levels they gained in math, how many they gained in English, and also the time on task um, and how many certificates they earned, everything like that. Uh, we're very much data driven. I think the key to a pilot is to think about which refugees and immigrants you would like to enroll, um, when you want them to start, and then you know fill out the pilot form, uh, reach out for a, a quick training session. Those are usually only about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and then you start onboarding. So the key to the pilot is um, which students are you going to put on, when are you going to start, 
and um, the rest uh, goes pretty smoothly. All right, so we briefly talked about the volunteer, how it works. This is what we'll cover in the training. Uh, we'll be going over your onboarding, uh, providing access to other teachers and admins, um, and getting started from there. Um, so again, you know, you can scan the QR code if you didn't see the link for the pilot. Um, for those of you that are on a you know separate device from your phone or tablet, um, that'll take you to our our pilot request form. If not, it was shared in the chat. Uh, we are going to be sharing a poll. Um, you know, we really appreciate everybody joining today. And so, you know, hope you found it valuable. Um, the poll just went live on the screen. Um, so if you have a moment, you know, it'd be great if you could fill that out for us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to, again, do any follow-up trainings or conversations. Um, you can reach out to us, uh, info at learningupgrade.com. And then you also have an opportunity to fill out some additional information in that pilot form. Um, thank you very much for attending, and we hope to speak to you soon. Thank you, everyone.